Hey, in this episode I'm going to show you a few different ways you can create monitors in your maps. Monitors can be more than just blank props, you can add life to them by adding various videos to them, or by even using them as camera displays. I'll also be showing how to add weekly monitors to your map later in the video. There will be timestamps on screen now for you to skip to any specific section. First off I'll add the props that I'll be using. First I create a new prop dynamic, in the model browser search monitor and you'll be able to find this prop. There's also an angled down version. You don't have to have just one, you can add as many as you like, creating all sorts of multi-monitor displays. I prefer to avoid symmetry when making these as that can look quite dull. Once you're happy with your shape, you can go to each of the models and change their skins. 0, 1 and 2 are all text moving upwards, 0 is the slowest, 1 is the fastest, 2 is normal speed, 3 is no text, 4 is weird, I'm not sure what it wants to be. If it's trying to be turned off, you're better off creating an all black brush and putting that in front of the screen and 5 is just the aperture logo. I like to use a variety of these with my monitors. And for a final touch, you can create a light entity in front of the monitor and make it orange, but not too bright. Here's what mine looks like now in game. Now you can still go a step further if you want more. We can put the elevator videos and more onto the screens of these monitors. To do this, we need to use a VGUI movie display entity. Create the entity, then we need to place it on the monitor model. We don't want the monitor already in position as that makes it very inconvenient for placing, so either create a new monitor or take one out and reset its rotation. Place the display entity in the bottom left corner of the screen, not the model, the screen. Make sure the red part of the display entity is facing out. You may want to embed this entity slightly within the frame of the monitor to guarantee full coverage of the screen. Next you want to change the width and height to fit the screen of the monitor. Again, that's the screen, not the full monitor model. You can measure it by dragging the select box on the screen. In this instance, I'm going for a width of 46 and a height of 23. It's okay if it's a little too big, but if it's too small you'll see the screen behind the video. Now you want to customise the display entity. If you have ham add-ons installed, you'll see this list of videos you can play. If you don't, there is a link in the description to a website with all the video file names and you'll simply just have to choose one and copy it in here. Assuming you want this as an ambient monitor or a one-time thing, you want to set loop movie to yes, then set stretch to fill to yes, otherwise the video is unlikely to fill the whole screen. Don't worry, there shouldn't be any noticeable stretching. You'll want to give your display entity a name, then with a the logic auto you can enable it on map spawn. Your monitor is now done and it can be fitted back where it was. In game it should now look like this. Make sure to alter your lighting accordingly as well. But we can still go a step further than this. We can get this one video to stretch across all three displays. I made a video about this sort of thing back in 2023. If you want more on the topic, you can watch that, but it's not really a tutorial so I'll explain it properly here. The first part is fairly simple. You need to create a new VGUI movie display. Make it really small and hide it where the player can't see. I'm just going to hide it behind the other monitors in this example. After whatever you call it, end it with underscore master. And in the group name, just put the name of the same master display entity. Make sure the master display entity is also enabled in the logic auto. In all the other display entities on the monitors, add the master display entity name to the group name. And also make sure all the display entities have unique names and they have forced slaves set to yes. Now for the tricky bit, UV values. This might get a bit confusing, but just try to follow along. UV values are variables of the VGUI movie display entity which are actually hidden in Hammer, so you can't just set it on the entity. Instead, these have to be set with inputs only, which I'll be using the logic auto for. Before we set the values, we need to use the logic auto to send an input to each of the display entities with the input set to use custom UVs with a parameter of one. Now first, we'll deal with the U values, which are for horizontal display. We have two values to set here, u min and u max. The value inside each of the variables are a percentage in decimal form. That means a number between 0 and 1, where 0 represents 0% and 1 represents 100%. And 0.5, for example, would represent 50%. The min value by default is 0, and for max, it's 1. This goes for both u and v, which for u, that means all of the video horizontally will be shown, as that's everything from 0% to 100%, which is everything. But here we want to stretch this across these two bottom monitors. So this starts on the first one and ends on the second. As there is two monitors, we need to divide the total of everything, which is 100%, by 2. 100 divided by 2 is 50. 50% 50 in decimal form is 0.5. So for the first monitor we change U max to 0.5. This means that the monitor will display everything between 0%, which is the U min, and the halfway point at 0.5. And for the monitor next to it, we set the U min value to 0.5, so that it starts at the point that the other monitor ends, and we leave the U max at 1 as there aren't any other monitors to stretch across. 
This is what it looks like in game if you've done it correctly. Now we need to set the V values, which are very similar but for vertical display. U values go from left to right and V values go from top to down. So the V min is at the top of the screen and the V max is at the bottom. Given we have a height of two monitors, we once again divide 100 by the number of monitors, which is two. So we get 50, which converting 50% to decimal gets a 0.5 again. Here we set the V max of the top monitor to 0.5 and on both of the bottom monitors, I set the V min to 0.5. We're not done yet, as we have to get the U min and U max values for the top monitor. Now if this was a completely symmetrical setup, this would be easy as I could just use the bottom monitor's values, but here I'm just going to have to guess. However, I already know the range of the values will be 0.5, as that's what we got for the U values when we did the math earlier. This means that whatever the U min value is here, the U max value will be 0.5 higher. In this instance, I just guessed until I got the right U min value, which seemed to be 0.3. And for the Umax, I want 0.5 higher than that, so 0.3 plus 0.5 is 0.8. So I set 0.8 to be the Umax value. We're now done setting the values. Make sure you change the light to represent the new image. If it changes colour a lot, I tend to just go for a mostly white colour with a little blue. Here's the resulting game. I understand there will almost definitely be some confusion on this topic. There's a lot of maths involved. I'll make a list of common problems that people have faced in the description. If your problem is not there yet or is unique to you, you can leave a comment detailing your exact problem and your monitor setup, and I can try help solve your situation. But we will move on for now. Next I'll be showing you how to create a monitor that displays the view of a camera in the map. For this I'll create a new little area with a different type of monitor. You can use either monitors for both purposes, but I'm using this one, which can be found when searching flat screen in the model browser. This time we create a brush inside the screen of the monitor. We make the same dimensions as the screen, but again slightly extend into the frame of the monitor to ensure no gaps. We get the texture Dev TV Monitor 1A, and we apply Fit to get it to fit the exact size of the brush. Next we use Control T to turn it into a brush entity, then we turn it into a Funk Monitor. You don't have to give it a name, but you can if you want to turn it off and on. Now we need to create a camera for the monitor display. You need to create a point camera entity. I'm also going to create an NPC security camera and parent the point camera to the security camera. And using the logical auto, I send the output on map spawn, name of my point camera, set parent attachment, and a parameter of lens. In the point camera, you can set the FOV to wherever you want. I took this a bit, but I eventually go for 50. You can also in flags have it start off and enable it with the input activate. This is very important if you want to have multiple cameras, as you can only have one active at a time. Next, in my monitor brush, I set the camera name to the name of the point camera I created. In game, it should work. You can't see it too well because the player is invisible, but if I go in third person, you can see me, and if I summon a cube, you can see the cube. That's all for creating cameras. You can also create multi monitor setups with these as well, but this time you will set the values using the face edit sheet instead. And if all your monitors are parallel, you can simply select them all, tick treat as one, then click fit, and it'll be done. As a note, you can't have any cameras active in areas where you can use portals, as it will cause visual glitches. Before we get onto the weekly screen, I want to show off one other technique you can use with monitors and cameras. This is creating a big white noise TV screen. I used this in the finale of Portal Plus Chapter 5, but I actually got the idea from Sky Ferret Map, one of the maps in the Lobbyist series where he made something very similar. What you want to do is create a new prop static and make it a test chamber sign. Then you create a monitor brush on the screen just like we did before, and this time we go out of the visible area and we create a box. One of the walls in this box, we just make a pure white texture. Then we face a camera at that wall, we link the monitor to the camera and create a way to activate it. I need to do this as I already have a camera in this map. I'm also going to add a name to the monitor so I can disable and enable it. If it's enabled while its camera is disabled, it will show the view of whatever camera is active, which we don't want. I'm also going to create a project texture with the appearance flicker A, which also turns on when the screen is on. This is what it looks like in game. Now I'll explain how to do the weekly screen. Ultimately where I'm going with this is we just use the Funk instance, but before I use that I want to briefly explain how it works so you still understand most of it. It uses the screen model attached to an R model that can be set different animations to be pushed out at different angles. We apply the monitor brush like I taught here, and is linked to a camera located in a black box outside the playable area. The black box contains a bunch of different entities, but most importantly this Wheatley model, which the camera is pointed at. The reason I'm not going in depth into how to make it by hand is mainly due to lots of unrelated things like setting up an actor, animating the panel, and cracking the screen, all of which are not the focus of this video. Instead, you can create a Funk instance, and if you go to Instances, Monitors, and pick Wheatley Big Screen, this also includes a wall for Wheatley to go with the monitor. You can place this in your map, but then you can create another Funk instance, and this time pick Wheatley Big Studio, and place this somewhere outside of your map. You can send the big screen instance any of these inputs to open the screen and tilt it at different angles. You can also send it an input to break it. It already has a built-in ability to break through throwing yourself at the screen. You can add logic choreograph scenes and select lines from Wheatley and they should work. Alright, 
So that last test was seriously disappointing. We now reach the end. I actually got the idea for this video through suggestions from my comments, so if you have any ideas for something you'd like to see a tutorial for, let me know and I'll add it to my list. Although not all topics are things I'll make a tutorial for, if it's really simple I can just explain it as a reply to your comment, and if it's more focused on mapping in general, I'm not very likely to cover it as I tend to focus on portal related topics. But that's all from me. See ya.